The things that drew me into science were really a, a curiosity, looking at the puzzles that were out there, the things you don't understand, and you just want to get a bit deeper. And that's really the enjoyment of being able to understand is probably the root of it. But after that, as you work a little bit harder, one finds that there are places where you think you can have an impact. So I'd like to think that we're beginning to get to that state where we can have an impact, change the way patients are cared for, change the way we treat disease or prevent disease. For me, I can come from a very small town, uh, pretty modest beginnings in Vermont, and I didn't know that people could be have a career as a scientist. I was at university and I knew that there were professors there and I could see a little bit of what they did, but I really didn't see myself as doing that. But I went to graduate school, found out this is kind of exciting because you get to peer inside and touch things that you can't see except with indirectly through instruments. And that puzzle became really exciting to me. And with time, I began to see that, well, not only is it kind of rather fun to use these instruments and study how, what makes us tick, but also that there's an opportunity there to use those tools and skills to change the face of a disease. In other case, we've spent our time working on breast cancer. The things that drew me into breast cancer research were really my beginning interest in lactation in livestock, in dairy cattle. I was trained as a nutritionist. I began to realize that, well, ca cancer is also related to metabolism. And so I really wanted to understand how diet might affect your risk of breast cancer. But we found that we had to identify a pathway that was clearly involved in breast cancer. And at the time in the 80s, late 1980s, there weren't clear breast cancer pathways. It's in the genetic analysis, we identified p53, BRCA1, several genetic risk pathways that allowed us to begin a first establish that those were involved in breast cancer risk. And only now, many, many years later, are we getting back to how can we intervene to make those pathways work better? So that's been really the mainstay of the work is how we can make the p53 tumor suppressor pathway work at a much higher level by manipulating environment. Highlights in research careers, I think they come as slow moments where almost glacial-like. I can think of one point where we noticed a difference in the incidence of mammary tumors, a model of breast cancer in mice. And we were able to, through several years, be able to identify the specific reasons why one strain is susceptible and one's resistant. And the impact of that all along the way is that tumor suppressor pathway that's interrupted in these mice is the most common genetic lesion in human breast cancer. So it tells us there is a way, even though you inherited a risk allele, there is a way, there are pathways that can be used to therapeutically to mitigate that risk and actually prevent breast cancer. So what do I see for the therapeutics for the next decade. I really see them built upon the successes of the last 10 to 20 years where we've seen dramatic changes. Nonetheless, we still have chemotherapy as our primary therapy. I want to see that as viewed as the bleeding and leeches of the last century and that we will have smart molecules that are targeted toward a more individualized approach that will really treat the patient's individual cancer and pathology, and more importantly, we will take, make real strides towards prevention of breast cancer. So the things I expect will not happen in the next decade. I don't expect that we will see us genotyped at birth, get a scan of our genome and tell us exactly what we're susceptible to and our risks. It, the genome is much more complicated and exciting than that. What we're going to have to understand is this epigenetic code and be able to understand the lexicon of how our gene, genome is wrapped and expressed and interacts with the environment. So really understanding the interactions between genetics and the environment will be a hallmark of the future successes. Why I've enjoyed being at UMass and remained here for the past 18 years, I guess, it's mainly because of the colleagues. They were competitive, hardworking, but supportive, excited about work. And when you have a bad day or a bad week, <laughs> you know you can have people to support you and go back and throw you back into the ring and you work even harder. So it's really the colleagues that you have around you and the facilities and the support. 
there's a more creative aspect to UMass. You often have chemists coming to you with ideas that are outside the normal range of what you'd expect, but then you see that that intersection of disciplines is where the really exciting science occurs.